In a lot of stream systems, we'll have cut banks, we'll have severe stream bank erosion, which is not a good situation, obviously. Um, really gonna, a, a lot of sediment, nutrients, is gonna come into the stream, it's gonna be carried downstream, but uh, very important to the local stream, it's gonna cover up all substrate uh, in the stream and really reduce the amount of life in the stream that there can be, which is gonna impact water quality because all those bugs in there are processing the stream for us. So it's important to preserve their habitat. So many, many reasons why uh, an exposed stream bank, a cut bank like this that's very vertical is bad. Um, there are practices to do stream bank restoration where there's uh, coming in with equipment and grading streams back, um, but not all cut banks are the same. Um, and it is very, very expensive to do those projects. Um, in my experience, and uh, what a lot of the literature suggests is, is true, um, is that planting trees uh, near these banks will very slowly, over time, the natural process of erosion will happen, but the woody roots of the trees and the shrubs that we plant will eventually basically just capture that bank so that it can't erode away anymore. And over time, we will get a really nice graded stream bank, which is what is a little bit more sustainable for the stream. It's gonna reduce flooding potential um, and also going to solve this accelerated erosion issue. Um, so in my mind, I have kind of a rubric for sort of rough and ready in the field. Does this bank need you know, restoration or does it just need tree planting? Um, for me, if it's below the waist, which this one is, and I, you know, I'm a little on the smaller side, so maybe your waist is higher, maybe it's lower, I doubt it's lower. Uh, but if it's about three feet, um, I, I don't think that, you know, uh, more intensive uh, grading is necessary. The, the trees will capture this within a decade or so. Um, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, if you are in this situation and the erosion is a really big priority for the landowner um, or the municipality, something like live staking can be very, very effective here, where we're putting in uh, cuttings of many native species um, that will very quickly populate this bank. You can drive them right in to the toe of this slope here and they will armor this bank within a year or two. Um, and prevent that erosion from continuing to happen. Um, this is what we're looking for, for the trees to do for us over time, for stabilizing the stream bank. Um, you can see uh, this tree did not grow its roots out into the open, but erosion over time exposed them. But I'm willing to bet that it, they have been exposed for quite a long time, and it is doing exactly what it should be doing, holding in this bank. However, we can see the fence is right behind it, um, and this tree is not gonna last forever. As it gets undercut, um, it'll hang in for a, an astoundingly long time, and I often see trees that are being suspended by their roots, and the main stem is completely out over the water. You see that a lot. Um, but we need to make sure there's a row of trees, two rows of trees, three rows of trees behind that, so that as that erosion continues over time, we can allow some trees to, uh, to succumb to that erosion, fall into the water, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It provides a lot of in-stream habitat, actually. Um, but again, this is, this is what we want to see, and this is that process of that natural stream bank restoration um, over time. Uh, here is a situation where um, still, in, in my opinion, we can uh, resolve this erosion issue with trees, um, but as you can see, the erosion is accelerated um, a lot more than most people are likely to be comfortable with. Um, we're, again, my rough metric of, of what needs restoration. We're now in the gray area. Um, it's higher than about waist level, um, but it's lower than sort of shoulder level. So we're, we're in that gray area where it's gonna depend on the landowner objectives, depend on the resources that you have, the resources that partners have, and the resources that the landowner has. Um, in this circumstance, there is a worse area of erosion, um, so we were able to get some funding to uh, do some um, bank work along a lot of this stretch. So this issue will be resolved, um, but just tree planting um, on this bank would eventually solve it in time. It's just a matter of you know how fast um, and, and how fast are we willing to let that happen. Um, I'm no hydrologist, but uh, you could see here, or soil scientist, um, this is indication to me um, that this is not an issue of legacy sediment, of, of kind of topsoil filling in areas over time. Because we have so many layers of rocks and stuff, this just looks like parent soil to me. Um, so what's happened is the stream has moved 
over here over time and is carving away into that. So this is less of an issue of a, a legacy topsoil um, impact and more of just runaway bank erosion because there was no woody vegetation armoring these banks in the first place. Uh, this is an example where we have pretty clear, uh, unequivocal, uh, some sort of m more stringent management plan is needed um, than just planting trees here. Um, so from my feet to the top of my fist is two meters, around six feet, and we can see this bank is even taller than that. Um, uh, without intervention here of grading this bank back, it's just going to continue to get worse, continue to accelerate. Um, about 10 feet behind this bank that's eroding away is uh, a paddock. Um, where animals are kept. And so the landowner, this is actually one of the reasons why I was first called out to talk about erosion and potential um, plans and why we were able to start planting trees in the first place. Um, but this autumn, we do have a stream bank restoration project due in here um, to rectify this issue. And then we will plant trees on top of that graded back bank um, that will be able to accommodate that um, to really slow the erosion and, and address this issue.